my friends? Hey, you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. This is the last in the current series of the Premier League show on my channel. The Premier League is done and dusted. I've left it a little bit late, I know, but obviously broken collarbone. I haven't been able to record, but I needed to get this done because the season's over. The FA Cup's been won. We can talk about all the teams now. You will remember at the beginning of the uh, season, I did a prediction as well, who I thought was going to finish in what place. And we are going to compare notes uh, uh, now that the season is finished and see how many of the positions I got right. I don't think I got many, if any, right. So I'm not sure if I'm the right guy you should be listening to as far as the Premier League is concerned. We're also going to do a quick wrap up of each team, how I think they got on this season. Uh, I'm going to tell you who my manager, team, player and signing of the season was as well, my friends. If you want to let me know yours, the comment section below, it's what it's built for, do let me know. Also, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed the series. Um, you know this year all of the feedback is really appreciated by your boy I am going to be back with season three when the new season kicks off do keep your eyes and ears peeled for that one because I'm going to go bigger and better next year and I've got some fresh ideas that I want to bring to you and a fresh approach to the Premier League show I've done it in this current format for the last two years but next year I want to go bigger and better but without further ado my friends you're here to watch me wrap up the Premier League for this year so let's wrap up the 2017-18 Premier League season. So here we go, my friends. Let's wrap up the Premier League, like I've just said. We're going to start from the bottom, work our way up. I'm going to try and not spend too much time on each team. I want to try and keep this quite short and sweet, um, you know, because the season's done and dusted. You've probably all, you know, seen these sort of thing already. But I just wanted to give you, you know, my review, how I felt the Premier League season went, my signings of the season, and all that good stuff. But obviously, West Bromwich Albion, Sadly so, they finished bottom of the league. Uh, I think they just left it a little bit too late. They A bit of a manager merry-go-round this season. They started with Tony Poulis. That didn't work out. On to Alan Pardew. Was even worse than Tony Poulis. Moore came in. And he did a great job. We all thought that there was going to be some miracle, some fairy tale, but it wasn't to be. Southampton went and got that positive result that relegated West Brom. And it was unfortunate because I think um, I think the whole nation would have been behind West Brom staying in the league had they you know, managed to have uh, stayed in it that week when Southampton went and beat Swansea. It was just one of those things. It wasn't to be. They left it far, far too late. Uh, as far as West Bromwich Albion are concerned, my prediction was completely wrong. Um, I thought Tony Poulis was going to do a lot better job than you know than he did at the end of the day I did not see him getting sacked I thought he was going to do very very well and the opening two weeks of the season the open with six points and I thought here we go I think West Bromwich Albion might have what might have found something might have found a way in the Premier League but wasn't to be they finished bottom of the league I predicted an 11th place finish for West Bromwich Albion so I was very very wrong on this one ladies and gentlemen but I can't always be right these things happen and it was after the season's now finished not so much of a shot for me uh, I think that West Bromwich Albion are just one of those clubs that they do not strengthen in the right places they sell their best players as well and it just didn't work out from this year tactically it wasn't good enough they were good at the back at times but they just couldn't score goals and if you ain't going to score goals you don't win prizes ladies and gents you need those goals to stay in this league and like I say they left it far too late and unfortunately for them they're going to be playing championship football next year probably deservedly so a very inconsistent team this year a disappointing season for them and I don't know if West Brom are the sort of team that are going to bounce straight back or get stuck down there for a few years we will have to wait and see uh, Stoke finished 19th this season were one of the other teams to get relegated I did not have Stoke re being relegated at all ladies and gents um, I had Stoke finishing uh, 16th this season but there's a you know a few gaps a few um, you know places there but um Unfortunately for them, just not good enough. I had them finishing 16th because they didn't strengthen, but I still felt that they had a good enough team. But a lot like West Brom, the manager situation didn't work out for them. Mark Hughes couldn't get them going early on in the season. He was sacked. Um, and then they brought in Lambert, which was a very strange appointment. It has to be said. Um, he had never been relegated with a club, but he's never really done much at the top level either. Uh, it's a pretty uninspiring uh, manager appointment, that one. See, whereas Darren Moore, uh, West Brom, got that that team going, Lambert didn't. They were better organised, but they still weren't scoring enough goals. They went wrong by selling their players and not replacing them. Um, I just think if you lose a player like Arnautovic, you're going to struggle. I think when you look at the impact that Arnautovic had on West Ham in the latter part of their season, it just shows you how many points he may have been worth 
to Stoke and Harry may have kept him in the league. They lent far too heavily on players like Shakiri and expected them to be consistent throughout the season. Um, Shakiri was kind of known as a bit of a show pony for the majority of his career maybe, but you know, even he couldn't fire them and keep them up. I think selling players like Glenn Whelan was just a now in the coffin as well. He's a seasoned professional. I know he's playing championship football with Aston Villa, but he was a seasoned professional and gave you performances and they just didn't have enough of that in their team this year. They're bound to lose their key players in Alan Shakiri, uh, it's going to happen isn't it but for me ready built championship team because they were playing at that level they weren't good enough very inconsistent this season and I think Mark Hughes had pretty much relegated them when he was in charge and it was really all doom and gloom when Lambert came in um, he didn't have a transfer window to strengthen the team either but their biggest problem like I say was they just did not replace the players that they sold and it was inevitable that it was going to happen in the end a really disappointing season it ends their tenure in the Premier League I think they are uh, been in the Premier League for 10 years and uh, that was mad when someone said that it was 9 or 10 years I think they were in the Premier League when someone said that to me I was you know blown away at that I didn't realise it had been that long but not to be will they bounce back a bit like West Brom I can't really predict that right now I don't know if the you know the chairman's going to spend the money to get them straight back in the league and obviously Lambert was released because he didn't keep them up so they're looking for a manager as well it's all a bit uncertain at Stoke City but they will be playing championship football but Joining them in the championship as well, my friends, is Swansea City. And this is the first of a few predictions that I actually got right. I had Swansea finishing in 18th place. Now... Swansea, another team who had a very disappointing season. For me, Swansea have lost their identity somewhat. When they first came up to the Premier League, they were known for, you know, short, snappy passes, getting the ball up there quick, pressing the ball. They they were signing pretty good players as well when they first come in the league. And then as the seasons have gone on, after they won the League Cup, they didn't push on to the next level. They went backwards. They started selling their best players, not replacing them, manager appointment after manager appointment just could not find the right man for the job I, I, I still think they got rid of Louder far too early and since then I think it's just been a slow decline for Swansea City I kind of had them going down this season as you know as, you, as I've just said from my prediction and I just feel like they didn't buy very well in the summer didn't buy the right players they even cocked it up in January spending 20 million pound on Ayu who couldn't do it for West Ham it makes you wonder doesn't it I know there's the nostalgia there he was a Swansea player before and he did great things for him but he has done fuck call since he hasn't scored a goal and 20 million pound you expect a bit more they've been poor in the transfer window and they've just been poor in the league full stop and probably another of the teams that deserve to go down left it far too late in bringing Carver Howe in he had a great few first few weeks there but his impact was done and dusted after that and they were relegated just not good enough in the window not a good enough Premier League team and that is why they find themselves now playing championship football next season a team that was a big surprise to me this year was Southampton ending up finishing 17th place in the league I had Southampton finishing 10th now you know Southampton have got some good players and in previous years they've done very very well in the league and um, I just did not see this one coming the manager appointment didn't work out for him. Um, Puel goes out, new manager comes in, he couldn't get the team going. The biggest problem was they were goal shy at home, couldn't score goals in front of their own fans. On the road, they were a bit 50 50. You never knew what you were going to get. The manager ends up getting the sack, they bring in Mark Hughes, which everybody finds a weird appointment because he didn't have the best of time at Stoke. But unbelievably, he managed to inspire that team somewhat. He dragged them out. They end up finishing three points above the relegation places, remain in the Premier League. And it's probably a good thing as well because that Southampton team has got some good bloody players. And it would have been a mass exodus, you know, for me to all the other Premier League clubs. I think there was a lot of players there that would have ended up leaving. Your Tadiches, your Austins, your Bertrands. And there's nothing saying that they're not going to leave anyway because that is an uninspiring season, a very disappointing one. And I don't mean to be rude, but I don't think that Mark Hughes is the sort of manager that is going to inspire these players to want to stay if a big clubs come big clubs come knocking i think some of these players could be off that's a disappointing season for southampton this is a club that all but a few years ago was qualifying for europe and you know consistently finishing in the top eight places and now they find themselves in the doldrums of the league they need to be better next season need to improve and need to buy well they can't keep being a selling club to the likes of liverpool they've got to start showing some ambition uh, next up my friends huddersfield one of the stories of the season, it has to be said, finished 16th in the league. Now, for me, Huddersfield were, uh, were one of the teams that I ha that were promoted that I had staying in the league, finishing in 17th place. I felt like they just about had enough, but 
they really, really had a sensational season. I think Wagner needs to take some credit. The manager did a very, very good job there. They had one of the smallest budgets in the league. They still managed to sign some very influential players, I think. The likes of Munier coming into the league really took to it very easily. Aaron Moy in the midfield, very impressive him. They were good at the back, well organised. I think they were a little naive sometimes with their tactics, um, especially on the road, but they managed to get the job done at home. They even beat some of the big boys this season, ladies and gents. You know, the big one against Manchester United, that one stands out. And they really, really did well. The draw at Stamford Bridge, and there was just some very memorable moments in their form and it's a delight to have Huddersfield still in the Premier League next season that's the sort of team we want in the league I didn't do Huddersfield away but apparently they do one pound pies and they do really cheap booze and it's a really good place to go and the fans are quality and it's going to be on my list of away days next year quality to have them in the league we just hope that Huddersfield can now strengthen for next season if you know establish themselves this season as a Premier League team but they need to strengthen they need to make that team better if they want to do the same again second season syndrome can can creep in. It is a thing. It's happened to other teams. We just don't want to see it happen to Huddersfield. Another one of the promoted teams that managed to stay in the league in an impressive 15th place was Brighton, ladies and gentlemen. I had Brighton finishing in 19th. I had them as being one of the clubs to get relegated from the league this season. But... They, again, a lot like Huddersfield, had some fantastic results throughout the season, were very well organised, really good at home. The home form really fired them to safety in the league. And, uh, yeah, they've, they've got a really good team there for me as well in Brighton. And the most impressive thing as far as they're concerned is the manager as well. I've just been gave, giving uh, Wagner some credit at Huddersfield. We have to give Chris Hyatt some credit at Brighton. He's done a fantastic job there. He's backed by the board and they need to back him again in this summer. For the same reasons I've just said about Huddersfield, the second season syndrome, making sure that you strengthen that team. Don't lose your key players to other clubs in the league. You know, there's players there at Brighton like Dunk at the back who was mightily impressive. And, um, you know, I wouldn't mind him at West Ham. That's how impressed I was with him, putting his body on the line week after week just exceptional stuff from Brian, and we are very happy to have them in the league as well and that's another away day that I want to do because it's down on the seaside isn't it make a weekend of it get on the beers but um Next up, my friends, is Watford. And this is another one of the predictions I managed to get right, my friends. I had Watford uh, on my predictions as finishing 14th, and that's exactly what they've done. But for me, this could have been a very, very different story. Obviously, they had Marco Silva at the beginning of the season. They had an exceptional start, did Watford. Um, they were drawing with the big boys, beating teams convincingly. Um, you know, they had Richarlison, who started the season brilliant. Uh, but it all tailed off after Everton offered an obscene amount of money to take Marco Silva there and his head was turned and his head went a little bit and their consistency just went out the window and it just wasn't the same they started to tail off in their form had to appoint a new manager but to some extent he saved their season he kept him in the league good home form under him but they're going to need to find that consistency again they've got a good team there in my opinion at Watford uh, a top half team or you know to the lower ends of the bottom of the table um, top of the bottom half of the table sorry but um there's a good team there, just need to find a consistency and they just need to get back to those winning ways. I just think there was too many results where they just let it go. Um, there was the game at Chelsea where they kind of threw it away. They drew, didn't they, at Stamford Bridge, but they had chance after chance after chance. And that's the Watford that we probably all wanted to see all season long because they really were pulling up trees earlier in the season. Again, need to keep hold of the key players. Probably will do because of the consistency issues. A lot of the players tailed off towards the end of the year. Uh, end of the year. Probably not as attractive to the big teams as they may have been early on you did Richarlison for instance was attracting the attention of all the top six clubs but that's tailed off a little um, will this manager still be in charge we know what Watford are like for changing their managers and I wouldn't be surprised if they did it again but um, a good finish for Watford I think they will take a 14th and be pretty happy with it uh, my team West Ham United finished in 13th place this year um, I was obviously being far too bloody optimistic at the uh, beginning of the season because I had us finishing 8th but I thought we had a good transfer window we did start the season with Slavin Bilic that didn't last long he got the sack because we had a terrible time of it uh, David Moyes come in essentially you know he stabled he made it stable didn't he you know he um <sighs> I don't know, though. It was negative football. It wasn't attractive to watch, but he did keep us in the league, and he has to be commended for that, at least. Um, 
at the end of the day, it was a poor season, a disastrous season for West Ham fans. But not only was it bad on the pitch, it was bad off. We've had all of the bloody stuff going on with the board. We've had all the stuff going on on the pitch, all the fan rights and all this stuff. We need to wipe the slate clean and move on from that next season. There are some shining lights. Obviously, the first 10 or so games of the season, Marco Nautovic couldn't get going, but ended up being the shining light in West Ham's season. And essentially saved us with his performances. An excellent, excellent time of it he had this year. I'd like to see new, the other players that came in in Chicharito be given a chance. He wasn't ever given a chance under the previous managers. They couldn't work him into the system, but with Pellegrini in the, in the West Ham hot seat now, maybe, maybe things will change. Um, there are some players there that can really make West Ham a top half team, but the board needs to start backing the manager and there needs to be a big reworking of the players. There's far too many there that are too average. Koyati is one of, you know, of many examples. Carroll, injury prone. There's plenty of others there. They all need to be moved out. The team needs to be working and hopefully Pellegrini's the man to do it and bounce us back into the top half of the league. Uh, next up is Bournemouth, my friends. This is another result that I got right. Um, they finished 12th. I had them finishing 12th. And, uh, sorry, I thought I could hear something in the background. Um, I had them finishing 12th. And, um, yeah, a good season for Eddie Howe once again. They were the comeback kings this season. They hold the record for the most times being in a losing position and coming back and winning. I think it was something mad, uh, winning or drawing, I should say. I think it's something mad, like, uh, 18 times they did that this season. Um, and, yeah, a very, very good time of it. Uh, for me, 12th place for Bournemouth is a solid season once again. Um... They've got a good team there, but now I think they need to start signing suppliers to make themselves a better than that. I think they need to be better than just average now. I think they should be aiming to move up into the top half and start competing for those 10th, 9th, 8th spot places now. Um, there has to come a point at that football club where they want to move on to the next level, and I think it has to be now. This was their, was this their third season in the league? They've solidified themselves as a Premier League club, and they play very, very good football under Eddie Howe. If they can hold on to him and hold on to a few of them players, there's no reason why they can't be pushing on to the next level next season. With the right players through the door, they can definitely do it. Um, Crystal Palace finished 11th, ladies and gentlemen. I had Crystal Palace um, down as finishing 13th this season, so not much of a gap there between where I had them, um, you know, finishing. Um, but when you think about the start that Crystal Palace had this season, it is very surprising to see that they finished there. But Roy Hodgson came in, steadied the ship, sorted the tactics out, sorted them out at the back, and they had a really good season under him in the end. When he was first appointed, Hodgson, everybody laughed him out of the building. Like, you're going to get relegated, you're going to do nothing. Don't get me wrong, for the first seven games, he couldn't get that club going. They didn't score a goal. But after that, something changed. The light bulb was turned on and they had a really, really decent season. They will take 11th when you think about how their season started. Bottom of the league after eight games or nine games or whatever it was, trust me, they will take an 11th place finish. They had a really, really good year of it. My only criticism of Crystal Palace is they rely far too heavily on Wilfred Zaha. Will he still be at the club next summer? The big fish are starting to circle. They want to take him on. He's had a really good season. You can't blame them for it. Without him, arguably, Crystal Palace would be a lot worse off. They relied very heavily on his assists and his goals. And you notice the change when he was injured. He went out for a few weeks and you really did notice a change in that team. They just didn't have much going forward. They've got a lot of dead wood, a lot like West Ham, that I think needs shipping out. Benteco would be the first one out the door. It's a signing that just hasn't worked. And they need to rework a lot of that team. They need to bring in some new signings, strengthen it. And there's no reason why they can't finish 10th or 11th again next season um, they need to start moving forward though they're another one a bit like Bournemouth they've got a pretty average team but they now need to take the step to the next level and start attracting bigger and better players um, we now move on to the top half my friends and the first surprise of the season as far as I'm concerned is up next and it is Newcastle United I did not have Newcastle finishing 10th this season but um, I had Newcastle down in 15th place their first season in the Premier League since being promoted as champions um, just a surprising turn of events for me but Rafa Benitez does it again he proves what a really really good manager he is they were another team that did not add a lot of quality in the summer or even in January Kennedy was a big addition in, in January though he really pushed them on coming in on loan from Chelsea but they don't have one of the bigger budgets because they've got an awful chairman in charge uh, he's been trying to sell the club for the last two years so he's not really investing much money but I think that's going to change this summer obviously Rafa Benitez was one of the managers 
linked with the West Ham job, but he said he'd rather stay at Newcastle. I think they may have offered him a bumper new contract and some transfer funds because there'd be, it'd be a very strange reason why he'd want to stay there if not. But they, they are a club that have such a big following, a working class club, and they deserve to be bouncing back. You know, I have been watching football from a time where they were making FA Cup finals and playing in the Champions League. What a fall from grace it must be for the Newcastle fans to see them where they are now. But they do play some nice counter-attacking football. And if they can sign the right players, they're another team. There's no reason why they can't go on next season and do bigger things. Where Newcastle are different to Brighton and Huddersfield, the other two teams that came up last year, they're a more established club. They are a bigger club. They've got a big support, big ground. They've got good facilities, and there's no reason why they can't attract the big names to take them on to the next level next season. Uh, Leicester City finished ninth, my friends, and I do believe, I do apologise, I'm just turning over the page because I've got them all written down in front of me. Leicester City was another one that I got right, my friends. I had them finishing ninth. Um, a good season, I think, for Leicester. They took on Southampton's manager of last year in um, Claude Puel, didn't they, after Shakespeare was sacked after a poor start for them. He did a good job. Um, and yeah, they, they started playing some attractive football. A bit inconsistent. I think Vardy left it late in the season to get his season started, but he was in fine form when he did. He is a very natural finisher, you have to say. He knows where to put the ball, lashes it with both feet, always finds the corners. A good striker. Um, he is getting on a bit now, so they may in the summer need to start looking at at some new players. I know they've got their transfer business started already. I do believe they've brought in Porto's right back, Pereira. Uh, he's coming in. That's a good addition for them already, starting the business early. The transfer window does close earlier now uh, as of next season. It closes the day before the first game of the season. So the clubs have got to push on with their business. There's still... The uncertainty of Puel, is he going to be there next season? For me, I'd give him another year. A ninth place finish is very, very good. Come on now, Leicester. We know you won the league, but let's not you know, forget that that was just a one-off. All the big boys that year didn't turn up. You performed well, and you had to to win the league, but it's not going to happen you know, all the time. You lost some big players. You, you arguably lost your best player that season in Kante to Chelsea. These players need replacing. It takes time. And I think next season, with the right side, you could push on and try to challenge for those top six places. Because some of the top boys are starting to get weaker. But for me, that's a really good season for Leicester City. The big question marks about them now is whether or not the manager and Mares stay on for next season. Uh, Everton are up next, my friends. They finished eighth this season. I had them finishing seventh, so there's literally a one-place swing. Spent a lot of money in the summer. Um, Kuban didn't work out early doors. His signings couldn't get going. They brought in Allardyce to steady the ship. He did his job. He has since been released. It looks like Marco Silva is the favourite to come in at Everton. Um, they obviously tried to sign him earlier, didn't they, in the season when Kuman did leave. But now it looks like he could potentially be coming in as manager. For me, they've got some good players there. I think they've got a good foundation, but they need more. And I think they need to start investing. They've got some owners with money now. Obviously, they're trying to... Uh, build that new ground they're trying to get all the planning permission sorted out for that they're obviously a club that want to go places but they need to go places on the pitch first before they can do the rest of it um, you know, some of the signings didn't work out. Obviously, hometown boy Rooney went back. He didn't have the best of seasons, and then he was unfancied under Allardyce. And there's question marks whether or not he's going to be there next season, with rumour with him going off to the MLS. But that didn't work out for him. There was a few other big signings that didn't work out as well. I think Sigerson started to come good towards the end of the season, but that is a team that needs reworking. But when you think wherever and were when Allardyce come in, to where they are at the end of the season. He did a magnificent job. I know he's not the easiest manager to watch. His, his style of play and his tactics are not that great, but that's an exceptional job. And the Everton fans should thank him at least for his service because without him, they may have been in the championship because really they were playing that bad at the beginning of the season. Now, the biggest shock of the year has to go to Burnley Football Club. I had Burnley in my prediction finishing 20th. And they have gotten qualified for Europe and finished seventh in the league, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be coming to all my awards and stuff at the end, like the, the who I think did the best. And Burnley are up there. Burnley, just for me, what a phenomenal season that is. Tactically brilliant. Every player knows their place. There's no egos. There's no prima donnas in that team. They all work for each other. It's a great 
footballing story. Sean Dyke has done an exceptional job. There's no surprise that he was being linked with you know some of the other jobs around the league, including West Ham United. He's got to stay on there next year. The good thing about them finishing where they have as well and qualifying for Europe is maybe they will attract a better breed of player next year. That I am no by no means knocking that football team and the players they've got. But they do need to add some star quality in there now. But they need to be hard working and they need to feed into Deitch's philosophy. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. That is a proper, proper football team right there. I was so, so impressed with their season. And I was so delighted to see them finish seventh at the end of the season. What an incredible year that has been for them. Arsenal finished sixth. I had Arsenal finishing sixth. A fall from grace. 22 years of management came to an end. It was the end of an era for Arsenal this season. Another disappointing one though couldn't qualify for the uh, Champions League places they couldn't even get into the Europa League final and win that to make sure that they qualified instead it's going to be the Europa League again next year um where Arsenal are concerned, it all goes wrong at the back. I think Arsene Wenger maybe should have left a couple of years ago, but instead chooses to bow out this year. I'm sure every Arsenal fan out there will thank him for his service because what an exceptional servant he has been to that football club. He changed them from the ground up. We have to remember that when he came in. He made Arsenal you know, a far better club, especially in the late 90s and early noughties. It's just a shame that they couldn't carry it on when they went to the Emirates and carry it into the latter years. And it's just gone a bit peaked on from recently they're still a very good football team to watch they still you know played some phenomenal football at times this season just far too inconsistent and that is why they finished sixth this season I'm sure most Arsenal fans will see it as a disappointing season but it does look like Onya Emery is going to come in that is a man who has done it not only in Spain but in France and uh, you know I think he could be good for that football club he has an attacking philosophy and you know he signs the right players and that's exactly what they need after losing a club legend in Arsene Wenger Chelsea finished fifth now this is one of the big shocks of the season for me because they won it last year they won the whole thing and I had them winning it again I had them defending the champion uh, the championship because no club's done it for a while but I just felt like with the with the style that Conte plays at Chelsea and you know the players that he had he could do it again but where it went wrong for them was in the transfer market they just did not strengthen you have to remember when they won the league they didn't have Champions League football but then they do. And uh, I just think it took its toll on the team. It took it, and there weren't enough squad rotation. There weren't enough quality. I think losing Diego Costa was a big loss for them because the player in Morata that came in just didn't fill his boots correctly. And that's why Chelsea ultimately had a disappointing season in the end. It's one of the worst you know, defences of the Premier League as well to go from winning it the year before to fifth is a bit of a fall from grace. But hopefully, when all the uncertainty around the manager and the players is sorted out, they can maybe move on next year. We don't know if Conte's going to be there next season, as well as Eden Hazard. He's being linked with moves away, and he is stalled on a contract um, signing as well. But they've won the FA Cup, so it may be enough to make him stay. Liverpool finished fourth this season, ladies and gentlemen. I had them finishing fifth. Um, Managed to work their way in there. Liverpool, other than Manchester City, have to go down as one of the most attractive teams as far as the football they play is concerned. Jurgen Klopp this year has done a great, great job. But for me, it could have been better. There was far too many results, you know, thrown away and far many results. Um, you're just drawn against teams that they should have been beaten. They still need to sort that defence out. And I do honestly believe the minute they do that, they could be challenging for the Premier League, ladies and gentlemen. As far as the you know the forwards are concerned, what a season they've had. Mo Salah just gave them a whole new dynamic. He was brilliant all season long. The thing is now going forward, is he going to be a one-season wonder or is he going to be able to repeat it next year? To score over 40 goals in a season is not easy to do, but he managed to do it for that Liverpool Football Club and he helped fire them to Champions League. They've got the Champions League final as well coming up this weekend. Should they win that, what a season that would have been for Liverpool. Uh, next, we've got Spurs. They finish third. I had Spurs finish in fourth. So now, whereas the, the, the top four are concerned, it's all a bit all over the place. But still, a good season for Spurs. Again, though, I think they've bottled it, been a bit inconsistent. They should have added some silverware this year. They've got a good enough team to do that. Um, they started the season very well. It went a bit peaked on when Harry Kane went down injured. I think they still rely on him a little bit too heavily in the final third. They're a good football team, though, and I think with a few additions, they can stay there. They're going to be you know, consistently in those Champions League places, but Pochettino and that Spurs football team are going to keep being you know, judged 
uh, each season on the fact that they don't win anything. They have to start adding some silverware, otherwise they're just going to be one of those really good teams that were put together that didn't win anything. But a third place finish is very, very good. Manchester United finished second this season. I had them finishing third for some weird reason. I still think that football was pretty negative at Manchester United. Very, very defensive. Not attractive to watch. Some Man United fans are not happy with the style that Jose plays. But at the end of the day, he gave you a second place finish in the Premier League. Manchester United, another team. They sort the back four out. They could potentially challenge for the championship next year. But ultimately for me, that's a good season for Man United. Other than the fact they didn't win any silverware. And that brings us... To the champions, Manchester City, the team that broke all the records, scored more goals, uh, accrued more points, just did it all. More wins at home, more wins away than any other team in any other season. It's Manchester City. What a season it has been for them. Pep Guardiola just put together a world-beating team. And for me, this Man City team are the first team I've seen in a long time that could potentially defend that Premier League crown. There's nothing else I need to say about this Manchester City team that hasn't already been said. Each and every player knew its role, did its job. What a season. And I'm sure every Manchester City fan will rejoice in this season because I don't think the 100-point mark is going to be broken by any other team. And the last thing I want to talk about, my friends, before we sign off this very special last episode of the Premier League show is, of course, my awards for the season. Now, obviously, we're going to talk manager of the season, team of the season, signing of the season and player of the season. Now, as far as team of the season and manager of the season are concerned, they go to one club and they go to Burnley and Sean Dyche. I could have quite easily given it to Manchester City. Obviously, they broke so many records. They scored more goals, accumulated more points, and more wins at home, more wins away than any other team has managed in a Premier League season. They blew teams out of the park. They were excellent, honestly, you know, scoring at will this year. And they were phenomenal to watch. Liverpool were another team I could have quite easily given it to. I mean, Jurgen Klopp has turned Liverpool into the, one of the best teams to watch in the league. They're just a bit shaky at the back. And obviously, if they don't win the Champions League, then, you know, it's still another season where they haven't won anything. But for me, a European place for Burnley is as good as winning the FA Cup. It's an amazing achievement for this football club. At the beginning of the season, I had them finishing 20th in the league. And for them to finish 7th, and really, I mean, push on to the level that they have this year is exceptional. Sean Dyche's tactics, his awareness of what's going on in the game, his ability to pick players to you know, work in each position, to work as hard as they do, the way they close the ball down, the way they get forward. You know, Burnley um, for years have been, you know, kind of kind of um, trademarked as a long ball team but if you watch some of their goals back this season they are far far from it they play some really really good stuff and if Sean Dyche can sign the you know the, the players that he needs to in the summer there's no reason why they can't push on next year obviously they've got the battles of Europe I think that maybe a seventh place finish again next year may be a bit much to ask they've got all of that going on but they can remain in the league and have an okay European campaign that's another good season for them but that's just if you actually think about what he has managed to do there at Burnley, it's incredible. A seventh place finish with that team is unreal. They nearly got relegated last year. I expected it to be the same this year and they went above and beyond. They're my team of the season. Sean Dyche is my manager of the season and I think deservedly so. As far as signing of the season is concerned, I'm giving it to Mohamed Salah. I have to. What a season this man has had. He came in for a snip under £40 million to Liverpool. I don't think anyone was expecting him to have the impact that he had. He goes on and scores 40-plus goals in the season. He is just excellent in everything that he does for that football club. He's got pace. He's got power. He's good with both feet. He can even hit the ball. He scores some phenomenal goals this season. And not only has he done it in the league, but he's fired them to a Champions League final. And come Saturday night, should they win that, he's a Champions League winner. And that is massive for Liverpool Football Club. They're in the Champions League again. And I think a lot of that has to go down to Mo Salah. He's got a great team around him. He's got some good teammates. He's defence let him down ever so slightly. But honestly, I can't believe what he's done. If he does it again next year, then really he can be considered one of the footballing greats at the moment. He can be considered one of the best players in the world. The fact that he's gone up so dramatically since he moved from Roma does suggest that it's possibly a one-season wonder. Let's keep our fingers crossed, though, and hope it's not, because I want to see Mo Salah do what he's done this season all over again next year. He really, really is a phenomenal, phenomenal player. And as far as my player of the season is concerned for the Premier League this year, I'm giving it to Kevin De Bruyne. Now, 
Some might be surprised at this. I could have quite easily given it to Harry Kane, who scored 30-plus goals this year. I could have given it to Mo Salah, who I've just said has had a phenomenal season. But for me, Kevin De Bruyne at Man City is the heartbeat of that football team. Not only does he score goals, but he assists goals. And it's not, I'm not talking about ordinary assists. I'm not talking about five-yard passes to the left of him for people to put it away. Outside of the foot, 30-yard pings over the top. He is the heartbeat. He moves all over the place. He roams. He's just an exquisite player to watch. And for me, Pep Guardiola has taken Kevin De Bruyne on to another level. We're going to have the joy of watching that man at the World Cup as well. And if he can do for Belgium what he's done for Man City this season, Belgium could be a real, real, real big threat at this um, at this World Cup. Um, he just has had a great, great year. And, and, and every time I watched Manchester City, he was phenomenal. And he was a pleasure Pleasure to watch, and that is why I'm giving him my player of the season. Now, as far as team manager signing and player of the season are concerned, my friends, they're just my opinions. In the comment section below, do let me know who you had this season for all of the above. Now, I really do want to hear from you. I'd love to know what you, the football fans out there, thought of this season as well, because I'm just a geezer sitting here in front of a camera giving you my opinion, and I want you to do the same. So there you have it, my friends. That's the end of another Premier League season. Um, it has been brilliant. I do apologise that I wasn't as consistent with the Premier League show this year. A few things happened. Broken collarbone, stuff going on in my personal life. It was just one of those years, wasn't it, my friends? But next year, we're going to be back. Bigger, bolder, better. I'm really looking forward to the new season. Um, the new managers, the new players that are going to be entering the Premier League. It's going to be very, very interesting. Will Manchester City manage to defend their Premier League crown? And will the new promoted teams coming up from the championship managed to stay in the league then we're going to find it all out next season my friends if you are new to the channel though remember to like share and subscribe it really is appreciated by your boy but until next season i've been dan you've been legends this has been the premier league show peace out my homies and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>